Hello and welcome to another Scratch tutorial. So, uh, tutorial. Sorry, my accent is weird. Um, all right. So today we're going to um, learn how to make a simple catch game where there's something falling from the ceiling and you have to catch it for whatever reason. <laughs> Logic, right? So I believe there is yes an apple and a bowl so let's start with the bowl so this is what we'll be using to catch the actual um whatever they are i don't know um oh i might make another tutorial in the future making this a lot more complicated but for now um we'll keep this simple so first um on flag we'll send it to its starting position um so let's just move it like near the bottom of the screen. See where that is. Let's go to motion. So tell it to let's tell it to go to zero. So now it will go to here at the beginning. Now um there's a couple ways you could do this. Um I'm going to start with a very simple way. Um so, construct this, which is an if-else statement. So, if this is true, then it will do this code. Um, but if this is true, then it will do the code in here. So, um, and I just added another if statement. So, let's just say, if the, if the left or right key, you can also do like A and D, 1 and 3, 4 and 6, whatever you want. Um, so, um, I'm going to use arrow keys, though, because I like arrow keys. Um, so, if right and left um, arrow keys are pressed, um, let's start with a very simple movement. And um, we'll say um, change x by 10 for right arrow, because x is the horizontal axis, and moving positive would be moving to the right, and left, negative 10. So now we have this bowl that moves back and forth. Pretty simple. I don't like how it goes off screen. So one thing I am going to add is an if on edge bounce after all of these. So now, oh, and also, um, okay, maybe not. Um, it's just a little complicated. So sorry, um, I didn't script that part because um, it's already touching an edge. Um, so, we have this pretty simple movement now. So, next let's, um, next let's, um, make something falling from the sky. How about apples? You're catching the apples that are falling from the sky. <laughs> okay. Um, so, on flag, first, let's make this apple a little smaller because I don't think it would fit in this bowl. Um, personally, anyway. Let's make this like maybe half the size. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, so and then let's we want it to hide at the beginning. So now we have an invisible apple. Um, now let's get a repeat forever function. Um, and then a wait um program. And then let let's make a clone of itself. Um. So every second, it will create a clone of itself. Um, so what, first, for the when I start this clone, um, we want it to show. For this part, I'm going to click show to make this a little more simple. So let's move it near the top and not quite touching the edge because of programming in the future um, that we're um, going to do later in this tutorial. Um, so um, we want it to go to X x something y this so when it sh um when it shows um it will go there um now we want it to go to a random uh random x position but not a random y position so we could either do go to random and then set y but i like this better sorry so so it will set x to random let's say 225 to or negative two twenty five to two hundred and twenty five. Um, the the whole vertical axis um, axis is um is um two hundred or well two 
240 pixels in each direction. Um, so that's um, 200 or 480 pixels. Um, so it will go to a random X position of the Y position, then it will show up. And then let's say repeat until and then get a touching edge program. So this anything inside of the bracket will repeat until whatever is true. And then we want it to repeat until it's touching the edge. That's why I didn't make it go all make the it go all the way out here to the edge um, or all the way out here. And also why I didn't make it go all the way to the top because the edge will be defined as down here. So repeat until touching edge um, for motion. Let's just make simple motion static movement. So it will actually pretty quickly fall down and the point will be to catch it eventually. Um, all right, so at the end of this, firstly, we want to put delete this clone um, because um, that way, if it hits the ground, it will disappear. Um, so the next thing we want to do is get an if statement. Um, so if um, so if it's t so if the clone is touching the bowl, you can find the touching under the drop down menu under touching mouse pointer. If it's touching the bowl, um, now we want to make a variable and have it be score. So this will be the score in the game. So, um, so um, we want to change score by one and then delete the clone. Oh, actually, we want this to show up. Um, so, um, so, um, also, um, we want to start this program by setting, um, the, by setting, um, the score to zero so that you don't just have, like, a weird score that keeps going up. And also because of scratch glitches sometimes, things that, so now it, if you actually manage to catch the apple, then it will disappear. You get more points. So that's a pretty nice game, simply. Let's make lives. So every time you miss it, you'll lose a life. So so, so on the at the beginning, I think we should set maybe mm, 10 lives, just to make this a little more interesting. So um, now, so now um, we want to get an if else statement. So, so um, then we want to get an op go to operators and get a greater than or less than function, but it doesn't really matter which one you get so long as you put it in the right place. So, if lives is greater than zero, which means it's one or above, then it will change lives by negative one and then delete this clone. Otherwise it will, um, otherwise it will just, um, um, we want to stop all, um, this will require you to make, or unless scratch has already fixed this, but you may have to click the flag twice after playing. So um, now at the end of the thing, if lives are greater than zero and it's not touching that, it will change lives by negative one. So now, so now every time you miss an apple, you lose a life. So you have 10 chances. And then if you let the apples, um, if you let the apples continue to fall, then the game will be over. Um, anyway, I think that's a pretty good base for a game, and I will see you in the next tutorial.